I'm going to give a quick update on something we talked about last week, which is pericarditis and why pericarditis is going to cause ST elevation. So it turns out that pericarditis causes ST elevation because of the effects on the epicardium or the outer layer of the heart tissue. So just to make sure we recall what's happening in terms of pericarditis is we have a buildup of fluid. This could be pus from infection. It could be blood from trauma within the pericardial sac. And generally, we get enough fluid buildup in this pericardial sac to start putting pressure on the heart tissue. And that pressure on the heart tissue is why we see a number of the patho pathophysiological effects of pericarditis that we see. We have decreased contractility, decreased filling, and subsequently decreased cardiac output. But if we take a look at what's actually happening deeper into the heart tissue, we can have a better idea of why we actually see global ST elevation in uh, pericarditis. So again, remember the inner layer of our heart tissue is the uh, endocardium, the middle layer is our myocardium, and the outer layer, which we're going to be concerned about today, is the epicardium. So again, just to fill that in, we've got the uh, endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium. So again, what's happening when we're looking at pericarditis is the sac that lines the outer layer of the heart is now filling with fluid and increasing pressure. So we see fluid filling and pressure starting to increase subsequently on our epicardium. If you think about it again, the epicardium is the outermost layer and has the most contact with the pericardium. So this is the layer that's going to be the most affected. So one thing that's important to remember is that the majority of filling or the majority of perfusion to the heart occurs di during diastole. So the heart is perfused during relaxation or diastole. So you can imagine the effects or imagine the effects of having increased pressure on the uh, epicardium. So when we're taking a look again at this layer of the heart. One of the problems is that it's going to be the layer that's most affected by this increase in pressure. So the epicardium is going to have, or is going to feel the effects of this increased pressure the most, and it's going to be consistently compressed. So if you think about what that means for epicardium, if perfusion occurs the most during diast uh, diastole, and we have all this pressure occurring on the epicardium, it's going to receive the least amount of perfusion, or its perfusion is going to be drastically decreased uh, compared to normal. So as, as a result, what we start to see is progressive ischemia uh, of, this, of the epicardium, where we start to see uh, a lack of perfusion of this epicardium. So we kind of draw out down here again what's happening, draw the layers of our heart. The epicardium is going to become ischemic from this increase in pressure. And like we talked about before, what's going to happen is the epicardium is going to, or damaged tissue is going to release its intracellular components, and one of those components is potassium. So the epicardium is going to start releasing potassium, uh, and the only way, where only place that this potassium can go is inward. So we start to see an inward, or a transient inward current of potassium. Because the entire endocardium is affected, we start to see this in, or sorry, the entire epicardium is affected, we start to see this in the entirety of the epicardium. So if we place our camera, we take a look at where our camera is, uh, angle is going to be, like we have done before, if we have this potassium, this positive current flowing away, it's going to lead to changes in our baseline. So if you remember what we talked about in class, our baseline usually sits at its normal, but when we have current flowing away or decreasing uh, a flow or flowing away from the camera or causing negative depolarization, that baseline is decreased or it sits lower. So the baseline starts to sit lower. So when we have our QRS complex and our T wave, we start to see a T wave that's sitting up here or sitting much higher. And this is how we get our ST elevation. Now, if we take a look at, again, what's happening in pericarditis is we have this transient outflow of potassium throughout the entirety of the epicardium. So anywhere you place this camera, 
anywhere you place this camera, you're going to be seeing the same thing. So you're going to be seeing potassium moving away. So we get a transient increase in, uh, in ST elevation. And that's why we see global ST elevation. Now, the pericardium doesn't just protect the, uh, the ventricles. We have pericardium that's surrounding the uh, atria as well. So a lot of times, this is why we see the PR or the P wave changes that we see uh, in pericarditis as well, because we have that same increase in pressure on the atria that's going to result in transient potassium release and electrolytes flowing uh, inwards towards the myocardium and endocardium. Now it's important to remember that our cameras are often placed quite far away from the SA nodes or, the, or from the atria, so as a result, we're generally going to see uh, P wave depression or P wave downsloping as a result of pericarditis. Um, so just to kind of give you an uh, overview of what we're talking about and why we see what we see in, or why we see ST elevation in pericarditis is we have either inflammation or fluid filling uh, or fluid filling the pericardium. As a result, we put increased pressure on the epicardium. Now again, we have to remember that the entirety of the heart is going to be affected by this, but the epicardium is the closest to this increase in pressure, so it's going to feel the effects the most. So increased pressure on the epicardium, which leads to decreased perfusion, which ultimately will result in ischemia of epicardium which again is going to result in the release of potassium so potassium release we get uh, that flow of potassium inwards towards the endocardium so an inward flow of potassium which is away from the camera or away from our lead. This leads to a decrease in baseline globally. And then ultimately what we're going to see is an increase in ST elevation globally. Again, because we can have the same effects or we can have these same effects occurring on the, uh, because we have the same effects occurring on the atria up here, we start to see that P wave depression because our cameras are placed away from those atria. So uh, generally we, we see um, the ST depression occurring in the P, P wave or the PR interval. But with uh, pericarditis in the uh, endocar or epicardium, we're going to get ST elevation globally. So I hope this helps. Uh, and uh, good luck with your assignments. Take care.